Alright, introduction 2%. This video is going to contain a lot of information. Um, because There's a lot of things to know before we can really start our percents unit. So, one of the things you need to know is how to take a fraction uh, to a percent and then percent back to a fraction. And that's what I'm going to start by showing you. So, first, I'm going to give you a fraction. Well, first of all, do you even know what the word percent means? Per means out of... And cent means 100. So when you talk about percents, you're always talking about out of 100. Um, maybe that'll help put some of this stuff in perspective when we multiply by 100. You'll see in a second. Let me give you a fraction first that you should know the percent. I'm going to give you one fourth. If you were to take one fourth and find want to find out what the percent is, the directions here say to divide, numerator divided by denominator, then multiply by 100. That's the easiest way to do it. But what I want you to first think, all right, do you know what that is? Most of you are going to say, yeah, it's 25%. Great. The question is, how do you figure it out? Now, there's, there's a few ways. One way, when you have a fraction, you can say, well, since it means out of 100, right now I have 1 out of 4, what I could do is just change that denominator to 100. Multiply by 25 out of 25, and I get 25 out of 100. Now it's out of 100, so I know it's 25%. But this is an easy one to do. And sometimes you don't have a denominator that you can multiply by a number and easily get 100. So how would you do it? That's when you're going to follow these other directions. You would take the numerator divided by the denominator. So let me do that in my calculator. I have 1 divided by 4 equals, and it's 0 0.25. So this is equal to 0 0.25. Now what I did is I took a fraction and I just changed it to a decimal. That didn't make it a percent. Now to make it out of 100, I need to multiply this by 100. When you multiply by any factor of 10, the decimal just moves to the right. When you divide by a factor of 10, it moves to the left. But here I'm multiplying by 100. There are two zeros. The decimal moves essentially two places to the right. And this is going to be equal to 25, and you would add the percent sign. Let me prove it to you. I'm going to say multiply by, and I'm doing 100, and you see I get 25, which is exactly what I said it would be. Now let's go back the other direction. So now what I have is 25%, and I want to go to a decimal. Well, when you have a percent and you want to make it a decimal, the first thing you do is you get rid of the percent sign. Then the decimal is right here, it's on the right, and we divide by 100, we do just the opposite, or move the decimal two places to the left. So now it becomes 0 0.25. Then to change a decimal into a fraction, you have to know how to say it. So look at the number, and what do we have there? You say, all right, if I ignored that 0 out in front, I have the number 25. That would be my numerator. Then what place is the last digit in? It's in the hundredths place, so it's 25 hundredths. This can be reduced then to one-fourth. So we went from a fraction to a percent and back again. That will come in handy when you have a table like this one. Here is a table and you are given percent, you're given decimal, you're given fraction, you need to come up with the others. Can you do it? You say, of course I can, Mr. Jones. First of all, <coughs> excuse me, let's start with this one. A percent. I have 350%. So if I want to change it to a decimal, again, I drop the percent sign. The decimal's here, and I move it two places to the left. And it becomes 3.5. If you want to put the zero on there, you can. It doesn't matter there. Okay? So now I have a decimal, and I want to make it into a fraction. Well, hopefully you realize the three out in front becomes a whole number. Here it is a whole number. And this is going to end up being a mixed number for a fraction. And then I have 50 hundredths, which is the same thing as 1 half. So it's 3 and 1 half. Now, this other one over here, I have 25 thousandths. That can be reduced to 1 fortieth. Then if I want to change this decimal... To a percent, I move the decimal over two places to the right, 2.5, and add the percent sign. 
Now I have one eighth, and I want to change that to a decimal. So I'll go up here. I'll do one divided by eight is zero point one two five. So zero point one two five. <coughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> to change that to a percent, then move the decimal two places to the right. Twelve point five, and add the percent sign. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. Let's move on to a graph. Sometimes you are given a graph like this. And here we have a survey. And the survey says, this is asking uh, students how many of them use the Wi-Fi on their cell phone. And they're here are the results of the survey. So very often, uh, frequently, sometimes. And you want to find out what percent each one of those are because maybe that's more meaningful to you for whatever reason. One way that you can do this is by using a table. This table here is a common one that you'll see. It just has the, the choices, and you put all your votes, and then you can find your percent. So the way that we're going to do this is start by copying down our data. So very often we had 50. Uh, frequently we had 20. Sometimes we had 24. Rarely we had 12. And then never we had 18. What you want to do is you want to add up this category. When you add it up, you get 124. Then, in order to find the percent, what you're going to do is you'll take whatever the category is, that'll be your numerator, and then the total will be your denominator. Because 50 kids out of 124 kids said they use theirs very often. So you would have 50 out of 124, and what percent is that? So in our calculator, I'm going to clear all this out here. Clear, clear. Okay, I have 50 divided by 124. That is 0 0.4032586. Oh my gosh. Well, I want to multiply by 100 or move the decimal two places to the right. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. And there's my percent. Now, I'm not going to write down all those digits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round this to the tenths place. The tenths place is the first digit after decimal. So I'm going to say this is 40.3%. 40.3%. And I'm going to do that for each one of these. So this one then would be 20 out of 124. When I divide that one out, I would get, I believe that's 16. Let me check this. So I have 20 divided by 124. Oops, that did 24. 20 divided by 124. I think it's like 16%. Yep. 16.1%, 16.1%, then I have a 24 out of 124, this one's going to be a 19.4%, then I have a 12 out of 124, which is 9.7%, and then the last one is an 18 out of 124, and this is uh, 14.5%. Now, if I were to add up the percents here, let me erase this because this looks bad, all this writing in here. If I were to add up these percents, that kind of looks like a negative, I'm going to get rid of that too, okay. <coughs> it should equal 100%. Now, if you added all these up, it actually does equal 100%. However, sometimes it might not. You might add it up and you get something like this, 100.2. Why do you think that is? Think about it. Think about it. If you get something that's slightly over or slightly on 100% when you added it, it's because all of these categories were rounded. They're not exact. This one just happened to work out nicely to add up to 100%. But as long as it's really close, you know you did your math right. Okay? All right, so that's finding percent when you have a table like there, a, a graph like this. So we did it from a table, we did it from a graph, we know how to go from fractions, decimals, percents. Let's do something different. Let's just find percent of a number, okay? So here I have two examples. What is 50% of 30? All right, 
Well, for this problem, 50% of 30. Now, you guys look at that, you're probably saying, well, I know what that is. It's just half. Half of 30 is 15. Great. Remember, I give simple examples. I like to give simple examples so that you buy into the method because that's what I'm trying to tell you here is how to do these. So right away, you know, I say, I know. I know it is 15. Great. You're a genius. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our percent, though, and change it to a decimal. So it becomes 0.5, or you could do 0.50 if that makes you happy. And you're going to multiply it by the number that you're finding the percent of. So 0.5 times 30. So what I'm going to do is clear this out again. Clear here, clear here. And I'm going to do uh, 0.5 or 0.50, it doesn't matter, times 5. Ah, I did 15. Ding, ding, ding. Times 30. And what do you get? 15. That's exactly what you said it would be. You're a genius, and hopefully this helps you believe the way that you would do these. Because this one here, the second one, what is 35% of 15? I don't expect you to do that one mentally. But you know that the method works, so let's do the same method. I'm going to change this to a decimal, 0.35, multiply by the number I'm finding the percent of. 0.35 times 15 is 5.25. Cool. All right. Well, that's pretty simple. Let's do a couple word problems. Then that's where it gets a little more fun. What I want you to do is write these word problems down, pause the video, and try and find the percent. So go ahead and do that now. Okay. In Brad's math class, 20% of the students earned an A on the test. If there were 30 students in the class, how many students got an A? Okay, I'm going to take this as a decimal, and I'm going to multiply it by the number of students in the class. 0.2 times 30, and I get 6. So I would answer this in a sentence and say 6 students got an A. All right, now in Pam's class, 12% of Flag Day Art Projects received a perfect score. There are 25 students in that class, or 25 projects, so how many of them received a perfect score? I would change this to a decimal, and times 25. And then I would get three, and I would say three projects got a perfect score. That's it. Okay? Not too bad, right? That is all, my friends. Goodbye for now.